And by the way, I just came from doing archery class, so that's why. Anyways, you know, God really provides. He really, really provides. You know, you, you, you think that trouble and horrible things are going to happen to you. And then you... Uh, You pray, and you don't expect anything good to happen. You you really you don't. It's not that you don't expect it. It's that you're so brutalized, you're so beaten up, you're so traumatized that you're not able to emotionally process whether or not it's going to happen. It's so I guess you do have faith, but you're just not able to emotionally understand what's going on. It's like almost like PTSD or depression, where you. You stop feeling anything, but you're just so traumatized and afraid of danger, afraid of trauma, afraid of social conflict or whatever it is. In my case, it was social conflict that you, that you, you know, you pray for help, but you don't have any thoughts about the future. You don't have any thought. You don't know that anything good is going to happen. It's not like you're walking in there with all the confidence in the world. Like, oh yeah, nothing, not, God's going to help me out. And it's not like... You're afraid either. It's just like you're not able to feel or think anything. You're just preparing for the worst, hoping for the best, maybe. But God really does good. And I, I don't need to explain the situation. God, whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever the situation is, God is able to help and make it right. And he made it completely right, like 100% right. He 100% fixed what I was upset about. The, the, the problem, the, the conflict that faced me, he 100% fixed it. <clears throat> he can fix any situation. If it's okay with you. He's never going to force you to give up your scar. If you want to keep that scar, he's not going to take it away from you. You're allowed to have a scar if you want one. If you don't want to give up that past, you don't have to. And I don't think that's wrong, and I don't think that's bad. I think that God is righteous, and it would be wrong to take away someone's scars that they want to keep, that they couldn't imagine. I have situations where if it was made all better now, that would be an abomination to me. How dare how dare that try to be made made normal again? You know, there's some there's some relationships that no, you broke that relationship and we're not going back into it. Not in a million years. It's not happening. Not in eternity. It's uh that there's some things that are destroyed and I'm not going to act like it's not destroyed and you know God did not rebuild the garden of Eden. He made new Jerusalem. It's different. If Adam and Eve had not sinned, we would still have the Garden of Eden, but we don't have it anymore. And God didn't rebuild it. Let's get the things off here. Oh. I'll say one thing. They work, though. The, air, the, the, air, the bowstring does not hit my hand or my arm, so it, it really works. It's good. it's good that I got these. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. I want to say something about liberalism. Something that people don't maybe don't talk about as much. Maybe they have. But liberalism really prevents us from having compassion. It really, it teaches a lie. It teaches something that's immoral and untrue in the name of morals, in the name of morals, in the name of being good and compassionate. That you have to go overboard, you know, just complete lunacy, lunatic insanity this away. So that it's completely false and actually wrong to go so we went so this far towards compassion that you know it it creates a backlash and you know hopefully if you're a moral person who knows the Lord and loves the Lord and loves America and knows what's right and wrong and has been educated about you're informed you're knowledgeable I don't want to say educated because education can be shit you know you can have a really bad education by liberal people or foolish people or people who, you know, just because you're educated doesn't mean that you learned anything. Oh, there you go. I would say knowledgeable. If you're knowledgeable about 
morals and philosophy and ideas like this, then you'd know you, you wouldn't make this mistake. But nevertheless, it creates this backlash. It's a bad backlash. The back, the liberal movement is bad, and the backlash that is, I don't know, hateful, critical, you know, in, in, in the reverse, the opposite movement is also bad. Being the opposite of a liberal, in some ways, in some, in some senses of that word, in some ways, it's really good to be the opposite of a liberal. In another way that I'm kind of trying to talk about, the opposite of a liberal is not good. Here's what I'm talking about so you're not in the dark. I leave my phone turned off or the, the airplane mode is on. And as soon as I turn on the airplane mode, I immediately see a YouTube notification. X and X so-and-so such and such, I forgot their name, totally destroys fat acceptance, which is the opposite of fat shaming. And so here's the thing. Liberals... They get triggered over so many things. I think Steven Crowder has made some videos where he infiltrated their events. And here's a list of topics we're not allowed to talk about. The list is very long. And one of those things is you can't shame people because they're fat. And it's gone to the point where you're not allowed to say being overweight is unhealthy or dangerous or undesirable. So they've, you know, so they're going so overboard to the utmost extreme that they're making stuff up. They're trying to find a conflict where there is no conflict in order to protect fat people who are being victimized when they, no one was victimizing them. But we're just getting so revved up to defend people who are overweight to any degree and at any amount, whether you're morbidly obese and it's very, you're about to die from it. Or else, you know, just a couple pounds overweight. Doesn't matter. Can't talk about it. It's just, I can't get into all of what they've done. They've done so much to make this liberal leftist movement. You can't criticize fat. You can't criticize, are you cancer shaming me? How dare you cancer shame me? How dare you say that I have cancer and that it's bad? It's just part of me. It's what I am. And so, of course, and what it really does is that liberals are living in an alternative lifestyle. They're living in an extremist, abnormal lifestyle. It's not normal. It's not healthy. But then the bullies, the people who were always snarky, bullies, jocks, arrogant about how, 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 how proud and arrogant they are about their own body, and then they just chime in and, and do the, the backlash. They fight against the liberals and say, Ah, oh, fat is shit. If you're fatty, you're a piece of shit. You're bad. You're terrible. How dare you be fat? Fat is bad. I hate fat. I hate fat people. Not me. I am fat. You know, I've I've got a little bit of belly belly there. You know, it's not you can't it's like liberalism destroys compassion. Because liberals are not compassionate. They're not friendly. They're not loving. They're following an ideology, but that doesn't mean that they're loving and compassionate. I'm going to open the door cuz it's hot in here. And then it creates it in that culture where everybody is aware of how stupid liberalism is. So it's really a straw man. Liberalism is a straw man against compassion because they pretend to be compassionate. They pretend to be the voice of compassion and they be complete lunatic idiots. And then they, I think we can criticize the ideas of liberalism. And then it creates this backlash of what would appear to be common sense, but it's actually just becomes, it's the backlash against the complete opposite position of hating fat people. So liberalism is fascism. That Here's what I'm trying to say. The reason why there's fascism is because there was communism. Communism was really bad. And so fascism was created directly as a backlash against communism. That's why we had fascism because stupid people tried to fight back against communism the wrong way. If you really want to find the truth, you have to go back to the beginning. You have to go back down down to the ground, down to the earth. You can't climb up the mountain over here to build a fort to fight the mountain over there. You just got to go down in the, in the middle in the valley where the villages hang out and just 
relax for a second. There's a middle ground, and there's a middle ground that hangs to the right. God is not in the middle ground. God is not morally neutral. He is positive, conservative, righteous. He's 100% righteous. The heart of the wise inclines to the right. You have to you do not go to the left or to the right of all that I've commanded you, but keep my commandments, says the Lord. I may have misquoted that like word for word, but that's what it says. And it says that at least two or three times in the Bible. Do not go to the left or to the right of what I've commanded you. Keep to the straight and narrow path. Don't go to the left of it or to the right of it. Just go on the path. God has given us one universal absolute truth about what's right and wrong in spiritual and philosophical and theological. You know, and I think that the truth lays 70, 70, 65, 70 percent, no, 75, 80 percent, 65 to 85 percent towards the right. And, but not all the way to the right. God is not all the way to the right, and but he is to the right, and a good deal amount, and a good deal over. Okay, but, you know, the left has some really good ideas. Not, I'm not going to say the left. The left doesn't have any good ideas. The liberals, liberals do have some good ideas. I care about, I'm a green peace, no, I'm not green peace. I'm a green, I'm not peace, but I'm a green conservative. I am an environmentalist. I'm a conservative. I'm an environmentalist. I think we should all have solar panels on top of our houses, and we should sell, and sell energy to the government, not the other way around. I think that we should love animals and be compassionate to those animals. I don't think that we should refuse to ever build any buildings, and I don't think that we should treat animals with more rights and more personhood than human beings, especially not babies who are unborn. We should protect our human babies. Save the baby humans. Save the baby whales, well, that's fine, but save the baby humans. You know, liberalism has some good ideas. Compassion. I don't think you should criticize fat people. It's not their fault. You say, oh, yes, it is. You're stupid. Everyone has, you know, my great, my grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents went through the frickin' Great Depression and they starved. Okay? They starved. They starved. They were starving to death. And you know what? For the... God says that your sins and your trauma along with it, this is what we're learning in science, it goes to the third and fourth generation of those who have something wrong. And it's not your fault, but it does come down the pike. For three and four generations, the epigenetics of human beings, if your family was literally starving to death four generations ago and three generations ago and two, you are going to pile on fat because the warning system in your genetics is telling your body, oh my God, there could be a famine. We need to pack on the fat because you're trying to not die. This is a thing. It, it, it's just, it's fact and science. I don't need to argue with you. This is the truth. This is, this is just what we know. This is unquestionable because we, we can see it. You know, there's a lot of great ways to lose weight, and I recommend if you can find that way to lose weight and succeed at it, good. But you know, this whole idiotic, stupid, piece of shit, jock mentality where you're shit if you're fat, you're a lazy piece of shit, and you need to just work harder. Oh, I'm the rock. He's the biggest piece of idiot shit pile that there is. And I don't like him anymore after he played that, uh... I forgot what it was. It was a movie where he... He used to be the nerd. He called, you know, once again, you're bringing everybody into these extreme camps. You're either a nerd or a jock. You're either a, a wimpy dork who has no social skills, or else you're uh, you're this arrogant jock who has no c compassion or humility or consideration for others. And, you know, he just stripped himself naked in front of everyone. You see, look, he's, he's, he's demanding their acceptance because now he's strong. He's not demanding that they accept him because of who he is. They're, he's stripped naked in this movie. I forgot what the new movie was about. He became like a police officer or something. He's stripped naked in front of all the people in his high school who mocked him because he's demanding their acceptance based on his physique 
not based on his personality or his morals or who he is as a person. He took that abuse and he drove it into working out five, five hours a day every day for 10 years or whatever he said. What a stupid thing to say. That's not a life. You can't live your life. I have things to do. I have a family. I have homework. I have I have work. I, I work eight hours a day. Give me a, give me a break. I have hobbies. I do things that are delightful and fun for me. Archery being among them. You know, that's a very, it's an abnormal, it's a, it's a fringe lifestyle. Being a gym rat is a fringe lifestyle. It's, it's not a normal lifestyle. It's a fringe lifestyle. And that's what this is all about. One fringe lifestyle fighting against another fringe lifestyle as if they both were the one true way to live. When most people are in the middle and really want to have peace with everyone, but the, the liberals are not having, not having peace with anyone, and the jocks have never had any peace with anyone. They're both very arrogant, hostile people in their own way. But they claim to speak for, for truth. Both of them do. And what I'm trying to say is that liberalism really destroys compassion because it creates an environment where you're either a lunatic or you're compassionless. You have to either be a complete lunatic in liberalism to be hostile in your own way or else to everyone around you or else have you ever, I think we sort of like the vegan mentality. Oh, I'm a vegan, you know, and you're being hostile against everyone. Or else you're a complete, you know, I hate animals and I'm going to rip them to shreds and eat them because I, I don't love animals. I eat meat, but I love animals. And there's some animals I would never eat for meat. And there's some types of animals I would never eat for meat. And, because I mean, I think, you know, you can love animals and be a conservative. Being the, op, you know, fighting liberalism doesn't mean hating animals. Fighting liberalism doesn't mean fi hating the environment. That's idiotic. And if you think those things, then you're an idiot. You're a complete freaking idiot. And you need to get a grip. God made the environment. God made the animals. God says that the animals are intelligent living beings that have communication. Go look at the book of Numbers. God didn't give that donkey a mind to be able to speak. He just opened its mouth. He gave him the ability to speak. He didn't put the mind there to create the words. The mind was already there. The mind was already there. God just gave the speaking ability. Some animals can speak, such as parrots, and they do communicate. Animals do speak to each other. We can see this more and more. People are paying attention now. You know, sharks communicate to other sharks that there's a, a scuba diver <clears throat> who removes hooks. And then one, one shark got its hook removed. So now 30 sharks are swarming this uh, scuba diver, asking for, patiently, politely asking for the hooks to be removed. You know, isn't that weird how that happens? Oh yeah, they don't communicate. They're not intelligent. Have you ever had a hermit crab? They're very intelligent. They're about as smart as you. Have you ever had an, have you ever seen, melt, have you ever encountered an octopus? Those things are damn smart. Probably smarter than you, to be honest. <laughs> Probably smarter than me. Have you ever met a whale? Okay, so... The opposite... God says that animals are alive, animals are people. But we do eat them sometimes. And that is the way of nature. It's, because, it's not the way it's supposed to be. It's not the way it always will be. But for now it is. Because Adam and Eve, our ancestors, chose to have a survival of the fittest kill or be killed universe to live in that's what they chose for us and they gave your your parents gave that to you your great 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 your first ancestors gave that to you because they chose to hate god and to question him and god didn't do this they did it god may have explained what's going on now yeah you've sinned this is what happens to the universe when there's sin in there Herbivores become carnivores sometimes when sin is, univer is, is introduced into a universe. So, you know, these are all just tangents, but they, you know, tangents are not bad. You can define a circle by an infinite number of tangents. If you keep on adding tangents, you will eventually inscribe a circle. So if I want to learn about a circle, I can just inscribe tangents on it. If I want to inscribe a square, I can just find the endpoint 
of a million rabbit trails that all end on the perimeter of the perimeter of a square. So there's nothing wrong with rabbit trails and tangents. They're able to describe squares and circles, given enough of them. In fact, even I would say possibly given three. If you just have three, you could get the circle. If you have four, I don't know, you might be able to get the beginnings of the of this of the square. Anyways, liberalism really creates an, a, an environment and really just where, where compassion can't exist and destroys. So instead of, you know, in, to fight against the, the psycho, psychopathic anti-fat shamers, we have psychopathic jocks that are finally getting their, their time to shine in glory because they haven't had any since high school. <laughs> they haven't had any glory since high school. So they need to criticize the, and, and piss on the fat people in order to feel good about themselves. And, you know... That's just what all liberalism is. I bet they're just they're just a, a, a pair of liberals fighting each other. You can have liberal ideas and think you're a conservative, but you have in, in, inside you have liberal ideas. You know, the more liberal you are, the more you believe in a centralized control of society. And the more conservative you are, the more you believe in libertarianism. And if you go too far into it, as I said, don't go to the right or to the left. If you go too far to the right, you become anarchy, anarchic. You don't want any laws. You don't want any government. Not even the control of family. It may be, may be a family, but not even that. You don't even want it. Tribalism. Just complete anarchy. And that's, that's true. You know, the ultimate expression of conservatism is anarchy. The ultimate expression of liberalism is tyranny. We never end up with anarchy. But tyrannies happen very often. If you go too far to the right, it's not a good thing. But it, you, you, it only goes a little bit to the left, and you start getting really bad. So the heart of the wise inclines to the right. There's a middle ground. There is a God is God is down to earth. He's not this, you know, has to be never fat shaming or never ne you know, never accepting fat people. You know, that's not true. We you know, God puts us all in different situations with different abilities, and he expects us to perform different tasks. Not everyone has the same job. You can't shame people because they're different from you. But you also can't not criticize. You have to be able to criticize everyone and everything at the same time. There is a place for criticism. Yes, fat is not good. It's not healthy. If I could lose the pounds that are on my body, I would do it. But I don't know if that's an, you know, a realistic goal for most people. And I don't know if it's a necessary goal. It's one thing to do something because you need to do it. But, you know, then there's other people, they're pressuring you, they're telling you, they're urging you, they're filling you with fear. Ah, you need to do this. But do you, do you need to lose 10 pounds? Or what? If you don't lose 10 pounds, then what? Does the world explode? No. But if you spend that time hanging out with your, your family, that might be a, instead of trying to lose 10 pounds, just hang out with your family, that might be a, a uh, couple five hours well spent. So anyways, liberalism really destroys compassion and it just creates an environment of destroying compassion. Liberalism and evil always ends up with infighting. Evil always ends up with infighting and it destroys itself. It gets self-consuming because it's the dark side. The light side is where it's at. The dark side was never correct and all these people in Star Wars who try to tell you that the dark side and the light side are coexisting, no. There's no uh, father, sister, and brother. There's no, you know, the light side and the dark side are both part of the force. I would say that the dark side is like a negative vacuum that's being sucked off of the forward motion of the light side of the force. It's actually a parasite. It's not actually an equal part of the force. It's inferior. You know, suction and pressure are, two, are similar but different. You know, if you put them in a... But if you invert the direction, they both go in the same direction. You can achieve the same result. One through suction and one through pressure, but they're not the same thing. One is an absence and one is a presence. I think that some people in the author position have made a mistake when it comes to representing the Force. I'm a Christian. I'm just thinking of this as a theoretical, but it's a good metaphor for what I'm trying to say is that 
The dark side always consumes and destroys itself because it's foolish. Evil is foolish. It's not better. It's not equal. It's not even intelligent. It's not even powerful. It's self-destruction. And that's what it creates, you know, evil in the name of compassion. Self-destruction, self-destroys compassion. And it's not good. So, thanks for listening. I hope this made sense. God bless you. Jesus is Lord and he's risen. And he's resurrected and he's coming back soon. And he came in the flesh and he's coming back in the flesh. He's going to resurrect everyone. And those who believe in him are with him, hanging out with him right now. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.